Hi there, in this video I would like to explain a little bit about the PIR1, the Promixis Infrared Transceiver that allows you to control any kind of uh, consumer electronics like a DVD player, a TV, anything with IR really. You can find details about the PIR1 on our website under products and then selecting PIR1. The PIR1 can learn IR signals from your uh, infrared remote controls and send them out again. The sending can be done using the built-in high-power LEDs or external infrared uh, stick-on emitters like the one you see in the little picture here. Both can be bought off our website. The uh, IR emitters are sold separately. Now let's have a look what you get when you buy a PIR1 and a IR emitter from Promixis. The PIR1 has two built-in high-power infrared LEDs to control consumer electronics without any extra equipment. In the back there's room for an IR emitter, stick-on emitter, and two switch plugins for assistive technology devices that can trigger keyboard events, and of course the USB plug. The PIR comes with a USB cable like this, which simply has to be plugged in to the USB plug. That's it. Now, if you bought the uh, IR transmit, the IR stick on emitter, this is what it will look like. It has a, um, a six foot cable and an uh, emitter on the front and a plug on the back. The emitter has a um, sticker on the back that allows you to plug it directly, stick it directly onto consumer electronics. This is because these are not designed to transmit over long distances, but directly be plugged on the equipment. So find where it transmits and plug it right on. Then once that's plugged on, plug it into the PIR in the IR out port and that's it. So with that all said, let's have a look at how we can actually learn an IR signal and then send it out again from within Girder. The first thing we should do is have a look at um, to make sure if the plugin is actually enabled the PIR1 plugin. The way to do this is by going to File, Settings, and then click on the plugin uh, button here, which will show this dialog. Scroll down till you find the PIR1, PIR4 plugin, and make sure that it's checked. If it's not, then just check it. Next, we need to create an action tree. If you read in the manual, there is a whole explanation about what it is. Um, on its most basic level, it is a, uh, a hookup between actions and event. Actions is send out an IR signal, um, an event is a timer runs out or somebody presses a doorbell or you come back home. All those are events that can be hooked to actions. And in this case we're going to create an, an, a GML tree, an action tree, that will send out an IR signal. So let's create that tree by just saying new here, file new, and then inside this new group we're going to create our send CC, uh, send uh, IR action here. So just drag it on over and that's that. Now we've created the action. I, when you double click on this you, you come to the configuration uh, part of it. Let's do the learning for the PIR. So as you can see in the attached picture we hold the, um, the remote about an inch away and then click learn now press the learn button and then hold the button on the remote till you see a pattern appear here. And the pattern has to be um, repetitive like this without any funny stops and breaks. Just a nice repetitive pattern is what you're looking for. This learn looked like it was really nice. So we hit OK and there we go. Now we have the uh, IR codes right here. Um, this whole long thing here is called a CCF code, which is the numerical representation of the IR code. Um, things of interest here, the repeats, you can increase that so the, uh, the, the IR signal gets repeated several times. If you're having trouble with reception, increase this. Um, also uh, important to look at is here where you want to output it. The back of the PIR, that's where the IR emitter goes in, the, the stick on emitter. The front, that's the built-in high power LEDs or both. So we'll just we'll just pick front and hit apply. Now point 
the PIR at whatever device that you just learned from and hit apply and test. You should now see that whatever you just learned actually happened on say the TV. If the learn didn't go 100% clean the IR workshop often can help clean it up. So let's press that button and see what, what we get. Um, it took the IR code that we learned, placed it in the box down here and is displaying it in yellow. On this side here you can see that it already recognized that the encoding of that uh, IR code follows the Panasonic standard and it looks like that's the only one it, it matches with. So we're pretty certain that the encoding of the IR code was a Panasonic. Uh, even though the remote itself is a Sony, they all kind of use each other's IR encodings. Now what you can do is, by pressing this play button and, and selecting the correct output up here, you have to tell it where do you want to output it. So we say front again on our PIR one, and then hit play. We can output the generated IR code, not the learned IR code, that potentially could be a cleaner IR code than the learned one. And if that works, just say copy down to the copy down the CCF box and press OK. At this point, as you can see, the IR code is much more um, repetitive, much more clean, and that might work better with your hardware. It's it's a matter of trying, basically. So now that we have recorded an IR signal, we have this action here. This with the little wrench here indicates that the PIR one send here is the action. And in this case, it was the play button on the remote. So let's call it play on the DVD player. Um, to add it, you can either right click and say rename. You can click on it or you can hit F2. All of, all of those ways you can get into the edit mode. But more importantly, let's try and hook uh, an event to it. And in this case, let's use uh, our keyboard as an event. So to do that, we go back into our, into our settings, to plugins, and find the keyboard input plugin and enable it. Once you do that, and you switch over to logger down here, you can see that when I press the shift, left shift LS, events are being generated, indicated by this little, little uh, remote here. If I press the P, O, I, and then I can use these now. So let's press, um, let's see, the, the left shift and hook that up by dragging on top of the action job. And that's it. Now next time I press the left shift, the uh, play button DVD action will trigger. So let's, let's just press that here. And you can see here in the log that the uh, left shift came in, the event came in and Goethe triggered the action up here, the play button DVD. And that's really all there is to it. The, that's the basic idea behind getting events and actions hooked together and sending IR codes.